Welcome to our new series, Break Trail, where we're talking about exciting journeys and new destinations. So I'm wondering, have you ever taken a journey to a new place before? If you've ever gone hiking before, especially in the winter, you know what breaking trail is something that you do when you encounter deep snow that's tough to navigate. And when that happens, one hiker usually goes ahead of their group and clears the way so others can follow behind more easily. It's so much easier to walk in the tracks of someone else who's already broken the trail. We often call those people trailblazers, but we don't always use that term literally. Sometimes a trailblazer is someone who has forged a new and different kind of path. Who are some trailblazers that you know or that you can think of? See, I can think it's people like Steve Jobs. This man changed the world in more ways than one. Even if you don't use Apple products, you've been impacted by this man's ability to see technology in a new way as not just something for the super rich, but something all people should be able to access. Or maybe Ruby Bridges. See, Ruby was the first African-American student to attend a formerly all-white school in Louisiana. Even though the Supreme Court required schools to desegregate in 1954, most schools ignored this decision. In 1960, six years after the Supreme Court's ruling, Ruby was escorted to school, while angry protesters stood on the sidelines. The decision had already been made, but somebody had to break the trail and be the first person to set a new precedent for education in the United States. Ruby Bridges was that amazing trailblazer. Or maybe even Rihanna. Yeah, she's an amazing artist who has broken a few trails with her style of music, but in 2017, she launched a makeup line called Fenty Beauty. Her makeup line was the first to cover an extensive range of shades and diverse model representation. Her makeup line was named one of Time's 25 top inventions of 2017, the best ones. And Rihanna broke the trail and made it more common for other companies to represent a more diverse audience. For the next few weeks, we're gonna talk about a lot of heroic trailblazers, but more than anyone else, we're gonna talk about a leader named Jesus. You see, Jesus blazed trails through his birth, his life, his teachings, his death, his resurrection. And as we journey toward Easter and beyond, let's talk about some of the ways that Jesus blazed trails for you and me. There are so many ways that Jesus broke new ground. He made a way for us to forever change the way we saw God and others in a few key areas. But this was a big one. Jesus gave us a new way to see our failures of ours and others. Maybe you've had a moment when, like me, you hurt someone you love and you wish that you could rewind the tape and change it. Or you've trusted someone else to keep a secret or a promise, but, but they let you down. It's understandable if you feel you aren't able to trust or even love that person like you used to. Or maybe you've let yourself down. Maybe you're frustrated that you can't measure up to whatever standard you've set for yourself. Today, we're gonna to learn about two people close to Jesus who let him down. But the way Jesus responded to his friends turned traitors were pretty trailblazing. See, we're just a few weeks away from Easter Sunday, the day we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. But in the days leading up to his death, Jesus found himself in some uncharted territory. Jesus knew he was about to die, but his friends and followers didn't, even though Jesus tried to tell them. Well, actually, most of Jesus' friends and followers didn't know he was going to die, but one of them did. In Luke 22, verses 1 to 6, it says this, Now, the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and, and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. In verse 47, it says, while he was still speaking, a crowd came up and then the man who was called Judas, one of the 12 was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the son of man with a kiss? Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance, and when some, of, some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. 
See, I've had some pretty bad friends and some really hurtful betrayals, but this story is more than I can imagine. Judas has to be the worst friend of all time. Judas singled out Jesus and betrayed him to his face, literally with a friendly kiss. Judas didn't just let Jesus down. He actually wanted him dead. But it gets worse. Not only was Jesus betrayed by his, fr- by his friend Judas, but he was also betrayed by his dear friend Peter. Peter was arguably Jesus' most devoted follower and one of his best friends, but, but Peter denied he knew Jesus three times. See, Jesus is God, but he was also human, complete with all of the emotions we humans know well. I can't imagine how painful that must have been for Jesus' friends to, to let him down in such significant ways. If your friend did something horrible to you and didn't apologize and you saw them the next day, what would you do? Would you avoid them at all costs? Confront them and get the awkwardness out of the way? Pretend you don't know what happened? Move to a new state or a province and and change your name so that that you never have to deal with it? Now that you've imagined what it's like to be, be let down, put yourself in Judas's or Peter's sandals for a moment. Can you imagine the weight of such a huge failure resting on your shoulders? If you're them, you you realize that that you betrayed your best friend. Someone who had never been been anything but kind and loving towards you. You betrayed your friend so badly that they ended up getting in trouble. And not only in a little trouble, but put to death. It's easy to see why Peter and Judas were very upset about the way they betrayed their friend Jesus. In the end though, Judas and Peter chose to address their shame in different ways. And one of the greatest tragedies in the entire Bible, Judas didn't give Jesus time to forgive him. Instead, Judas tragically chose to end his own life. Judas was so overcome with with grief and guilt that he forgot what Jesus was all about. Jesus' life and mission were never about guilt, shame, or grief. Jesus was always about grace, love, and forgiveness. And at the same time, Peter was also wrestling with his, his share of grief and guilt. Even after Jesus rose from the dead, I'm sure Peter thought Jesus couldn't or wouldn't let him lead anything after this this colossal failure. But instead, Jesus showed Peter a new path that he could take. See, in John 21, 15 to 17, it says this, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And the third time he said to to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all these things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. See, Jesus didn't give up on Peter. Even when fear led Peter to lie about his friendship and loyalty to Jesus, instead of anger or condemnation, Jesus gave Peter forgiveness and grace. Peter ended up doing exactly what Jesus told him to do. He became the leader of the sheep Jesus was talking about, Jesus' followers. Peter went on to lead the early church and is still known by many Christian traditions as the first official leader of the church. Like Peter and Judas, maybe you felt like you've let Jesus down. Maybe you felt like you were never good enough for Jesus to care about to you to begin with. But if there's anything that we can learn from Peter and Judas, is that there's nothing you could do to cause Jesus to love you less. See, Jesus shows us in the story that even the most extreme betrayal will never change Jesus' perspective or love. Peter came to, to believe what Judas forgot, that while any other friend in the world might not forgive him, Jesus breaks trail. Jesus always forgives. Jesus didn't give up on his friends even when they gave up on themselves. And the same is true for you. No matter what we've done or what we may think about ourselves, Jesus never gives up on us.